Dear student, future colleague, welcome to the journey becoming a doctor and thank you for choosing me as your guide. In this video, I will explain the escape bits, why and how they occur. Let's start! When the normal pacemaker stops sending impulses or the conduction of the impulses is blocked, escape bits and escape rhythms occur. When the assay node fails to send an impulse, the heart remains temporarily still. This on the ACG is recorded as a flat line after a regular rhythm. When such a break appears, another potential ectopic pacemaker starts generating impulses to save the situation. Depending on to which level belongs the focus that starts to pace, we distinguish atrial, junctional and ventricular escape bits and atrial, junctional and ventricular escape rhythms. Now, what is the difference between an escape rhythm and an escape bit? Well, when a previously dominant pacemaker stops working completely, another potential ectopic pacemaker will escape to produce impulses and will become the dominant pacemaker, thereby will produce an escape rhythm. The rate at which the ectopic pacemaker paces the heart decreases down the conducting system. The assay node paces at a rate from 60 to 100 beats per minute, but a focus in the atria paces at a rate from 60 to 80 beats per minute. Now, if the focus is in the AV node, we will have a rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute. And if the focus is in the ventricles, we will have a rate of 20 to 40 beats per minute. Under normal conditions, all of the potential pacemakers are suppressed by the more rapid impulses coming from above. In the other hand, when the dominant pacemaker stops pacing for a brief period, usually for a period of only one cardiac cycle, another automaticity focus from below, no longer overdrive suppressed, will escape to produce a bit as an attempt to become dominant. But in this case, because the previously dominant pacemaker starts pacing again and takes over the dominance again, we will see just a single bit that we call an escape bit. An escape bit, in fact, represents the first bit of the attempt by the new focus to pace and become dominant. But the return of the SA node overdrive suppresses it again. Depending on to which level the impulse originates from, we have atrial, junctional and ventricular escape bits. Let's discuss the escape bits one by one. First, we have atrial escape bit. During a regular sinus rhythm, if a transient sinus block causes the assay node to stop pacing, an atrial automaticity focus will wake up to generate an impulse. Then, because the assay node resumes its pacing again, it overdrive suppresses the vacant atrial focus. This represents an atrial escape bit. Let's examine the ACG. You see here a regular sinus rhythm. After a few cycles, there is a brief pause and a flat baseline. After the break, you notice that there is an appearance of a P wave and subsequent QRST pattern. But now, the P wave differs in shape from the previous ones that are generated at the SA node. After that, when the SA node resumes its activity again, the same looking P wave as before appears again. Then we have junctional escape bit. During a regular sinus rhythm, if a transient sinus block makes the assay node to stop pacing and all atrial foci fail to take the leading position, 
Then a junctional automaticity focus will wake up to save the situation. The impulse emitted by the junctional focus regularly will be conducted via the ventricular conduction system to the ventricles causing them to contract and in some cases in a retrograde fashion to the atria too. Let's examine the ACG. So you see here a regular sinus rhythm. After few cycles there is a brief pause, a silence and a flat baseline on ACG. After the break you notice that there is an appearance of a normal looking QRS complex and a following T wave, but there is no P wave. Now if the depolarization wave spreads also in a retrograde fashion, depolarizing the atria, we will expect a P wave as a sign of the depolarization of the atria. But in this case the P wave will be inverted, since the depolarization wave moves in the opposite direction. After that the SA node resumes its activity again and starts to lead the heart again, causing a normal PQRST pattern as before to appear again. Next we have ventricular escape bit. After a regular sinus rhythm, a ventricular automaticity focus may escape to produce a bit if it is no longer overdrive suppressed by a depolarization wave coming from above. Well, it is pretty unusual that all of the automaticity foci from above will fail to pace, but there is a certain situation where this can actually occur. Let's see how. The parasympathetic system of the autonomic nervous system stimulates just the upper half of the heart and not the ventricles. So in a situation when there is an excessive parasympathetic activity, which inhibits the SA node as well as all of the atrial foci and the AV node too, to the point of inactivity, a ventricular automaticity focus will wake up to save the situation. But this is usually transient and the SA node quickly resumes its pacing activity again. So on ACG you will see a regular rhythm after which there is a pause, a flat baseline. After the pause there will be a bizarre QRS complex which pops out out of nowhere. Usually this supraventricular silence is transient and the assay node starts to pace again and with that we will get a regular rhythm again. Because these conditions occur for a short period of time it is quite uncertain to catch them while regular examination of a patient, but in case you do, you should know where they come from. And at this point I would like to end this lesson. I hope that it was helpful for you and if yes, please make sure to subscribe to support me. Thank you for your attention and I hope to see you in the next video.